Very good afternoon, my dear students and teachers with their present. And the protagonist of today's program, Professor Kumartev Lanji. Uh, you know, I think that today is the National Technology Day. It is very significant in the sense that Almost 25 years from now, we conducted one nuclear test, Pokhran 2, on the same day. And to commemorate that program, Government of India has declared this day as the National Technology Day. Basically, to inspire those who are associated in developing, bringing new technologies to make our lives very easy and also to encourage you people who are the future of the society into more technology driven mode. So we have almost uh, past 25 years and during this time we have developed a lot of things, new technologies have come lot of startups have come up. Our space programs have reached new scales, new, you know, uh, almost with more than 100 satellites uh, we are launching the payloads. So this is all what we have been doing. So to talk about our technological achievements after independence, uh, Professor Banerjee will take you through. Before I tell him to take the dais, I would like to introduce you, Professor Banerjee. He is the Professor of the Department of Instrumentation and Electrical Engineering, Jadavpur University, and is a full-time professor. He did his undergraduation, postgraduation and also PhD from Jagdhu University. He has worked as an investigator, co-investigator in a number of very important projects sponsored by Defense Research and Development Laboratory, Government of India and Indian Space Research Organization. His areas of interest include control systems, embedded systems, digital system design and sensor signal conditioning. Before he took up academia as his career, he was in the industry, so he was a practicing engineer and with that gene, he is shaping the engineers of tomorrow. So I am sure that his deliberation will be quite interesting to all of you. So before I formally tell him to come over here and start this section, uh, since we are from Science Museum, we keep talking about science, technology, and as a communicator, we have some apprehensions as we stand today, as far as technology, you know, scenario, all over the world is concerned because world has now become a village so you cannot think anything in isolation actually let me ask at least uh, all of you whether you have heard the name of René Descartes he was a French philosopher in the medieval period whether you have heard the name of René Descartes any one of you anyway René Descartes was a very famous French philosopher. What he did, what he told, he was very interesting, you know, statement he made. What he told, I think, therefore I am. That means, we the homo sapiens, 
it is our power of thinking that made us different from other species of animal kingdom so this with this thinking process we started using fire we started from will to you know uh, do lot of improvements in our transportation system, uh, system. we okay we have done a lot of you know uh, airborne devices we have explored spaces we have done so many things because that is our power of thinking that is why we are called homo sapiens now what has happened gradually as the technology is getting progressed we started outsourcing our thinking ability we started outsourcing mane amra jeta bhabji ebar onnoke bhabte dicchi what we have done now if i ask most of you that what is the uh, what is the you know outcome of the multiplication 12 into 9 immediately you try to search for calculator immediately calculator tumra khuje nebe kothay ache or the way we have become so much dependent on mobile no our mobile phone so we do not remember the numbers of our near and dear ones amra mone rakhi na karon oi tao outsource kore diyechi that's fine devices are getting very smarter and gradually we have learned that we can to play chess you do not need anyone in your front you can play chess with your computer okay you need not go to library actually the library to come jay because you can get digital copies of millions of books on a microchip at a microchip power jay and what is the size of the microchip almost like your no finger nail so this is the technology but we are outsourcing and well we are very happy we are telling that it is almost like sorry if i am technical no, no, this is artificial intelligence we are very happy so with that we are gradually depending on apps amra prochure apps byabohar korar shuru korlam on a gateway we started using a lot of gateways but we are happy why but still at the end of the day it is human kind it a manush who are programming the apps they are devising the gateways and we are getting good results from the smarter devices that is fine and also the entrepreneurs are also very happy jara businessmen they are very happy because ai is going to cut almost like 300 million jobs elsewhere and the one com men pore prochur kaj korte parbo we are very happy but a nemesis has come who recently eta ko sangathi jinish eshe what you might have heard the name of chat gpt chat gpt and similar tools that has come right now so you need not think if you want to have a vacation you just type immediately it will give you a result if you want to have a tomader baba mara jodi mone koren je kibhabe financial planning korbo for the financial planning you just type it out it will give you result even for matrimony purpose you give you a profile immediately you get everything so your thinking process for which we human being amra eta bhabi je amra chinta kori boli sobche boro amra eta prajati that is almost getting blocked sob kele na hocche so we homo sapiens are now becoming homo appians amra appian modhe thakchi 
তাহলে ভবিষ্যতে ইন ফিউচার আমরা ডেকার্টের কথা বলছি মনে রেখো একটু ডেকার্ট তুমি না জানলো পরবর্তীকালে জানবে বড় হলে ডেকার্ট যেটা বলেছিলেন যে আই থিঙ্ক দেয়ার ফর আই অ্যাম আমি ভাবি বলি আমি এক মানুষ মেবি ভবিষ্যতে যদি এরকম ধরনের ডেকার্টের কোনো ফিলোসফার আসেন তিনি বলবেন এআইস থিঙ্ক দেয়ার ফর উই আর এআইস আছে বলি আমরা আছি সুতরাং টেকনোলজি ইজ ইন এ ভেরি ক্রুশিয়াল স্টেজ সেখানে আমরা যারা ভারতীয়রা যারা আজকে ধরো সেভেন্টি ফাইভ ইয়ার্স অফ ইন্ডিপেন্ডেন্স খুব গর্বের সঙ্গে করতে যাচ্ছি আমাদের ইনোভেশন ইন্ডেক্স অনেক বেশি উঠে যাচ্ছে গভর্নমেন্ট প্রচুর গভর্নমেন্ট ইস ইউনো লেইন লট অফ স্ট্রেস ইন ইনোভেশন বারবার বলছে যে নতুন করে ভাবো থিঙ্ক ডিফারেন্টলি সো এই সমস্ত কিছু পরিপ্রেক্ষিতে এই দিনটা অত্যন্ত তাৎপর্যপূর্ণ ইট ইস এ ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট ডে at the backdrop of whatever i have and i will be happy if i can make you understand 1% of what i have said you and hope being the future citizens of the country we will take it forward thank you very much uh, sorry professor banerji because i have taken some of your time but i couldn't as a communicator i couldn't resist that temptation of giving my feelings to the young ones those who are here and those who are in the line thank you very much please respect Science fiction. 
right? So if you go through his life history, you will find that he used to write science fiction for students like him. And he also started the first research institute in Asia. I'll come to it, the Post Institute. Okay. So that's the first research institute in Asia in multidisciplinary science. It's where you can take up physics, chemistry, biology, and what not. And obviously, Sir C. D. Raman, our first Nobel laureate in science, right? He was also the first Nobel laureate in Asia in any branch of science. Okay. So look at the span of uh, lifespan from 1880 to 1970, and he received Nobel Prize in 1930. That means pre-independent stage. Then we have two very eminent research researchers, or maybe. A, uh, professors in science, Professor Shokhandan Bosch and Professor Deknath Shah. Right? So, Professor Deknath Shah is more a uh, technocrat. He joined administration, right? He was a uh, member of the planning commission, so on and so forth. The major river projects, right? High power harnessing projects, they were planned by Professor Shah. But if I look at the history or maybe the work of Professor Shatanar Bosch, then he is a theoretical physicist, right? And uh, it might be a bit difficult for you to understand, but since you are in class 9 and 10, you are learning physics. So he has a special work which is called the Bose-Einstein equation, right? So the majority of the uh, subatomic particles, right, which which describe the micro level physics, that means how the universe came into being, right, how it's expanding, when it will collapse. Okay. They talk about subatomic particles, quarks. So one of them, and maybe the most important, they are called bosons. Okay, so bosons are named after Professor Shatrunar Bosch. So the very first misconcept is whether there are scientific minds, masters in India before independence, the answer is yes, they were. The second question is whether there are the research institutes, scientific research institutes. Once again, the answer is yes. And if you look at the second line, the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science, which is now in Jalapu, right? That was initiated and founded in 1876. Right. So, it's, it's more than 100 years, 150 years. Okay, so this institute is in. And there, the basic science, research on basic science has been carried out for so many years. Right. And secondly, the more famous is the Bose Institute, which is founded by Achajur Bose in 1970. And it was the first of its kind in the area of interdisciplinary research in Asia. Right. Second, and the final one is where there are sufficient universities and colleges in India. Once again, I took the statistics from uh, government records. So the available data, I am not giving a chronological order. I mean in 1940, that means seven years prior to independence, there were 16 universities and 300 plus colleges in India. Right? And they basically used to follow the Western curricula, Western syllabus and the medium of instruction is always in English, right? So if you look at typical universities, which are very famous, University of Calcutta, University of Bombay and Madras, they were established in 1857, right? So do you remember what really happened in 1857? Do you remember what? The Sipai Mutiny Party, okay? So by that time, these universities, they are in vogue, okay? Then the first medical colleges, they were established in 1835 in Madras and Calcutta, right? So Madras was slightly ahead of Calcutta in the sense that even female students can join and learn the medical sciences, okay? That came a little bit uh, later in Kolkata. And in engineering science, there were different colleges, right? The Thomason College of Civil Engineering, Ruki, was the first of its kind. I have got this data from some website. 
and our B college in Shirpur that became B college in 1924. Okay, so that's also once again some 28 years before our independence in 1947. So the natural question is what went wrong during the British Raj, right? So obviously clash or conflict of interests because the industrial revolution that took place in Europe around 1750 or something like that, maybe plus minus 10 years, right? So industry was going at a very fast rate, right? So whatever industry is there in India, and the most prominent one was the textile industry. Indian silk, cotton, etc., etc., were very popular in Europe. Okay, so there, those industry and their products, they need to be obliterated from India. Otherwise, the European countries, especially the colonial rule, right, they cannot profit from the products. So, if you remember uh, this, uh, uh, this song, JU. Get rid of this product which is made in England and shipped to India. Right? So, what really happened in the long run is materials and resources they were shipped out from India because it's under British charge. And those industries, there are very few, which were prospering in India, they were gradually allowed to die. Right? So that their interest, interest of the British Raj is essentially highlighted. Now this is quite natural. If this is not your own home, this is not your motherland, it's just a colony of the British Raj, then nobody is interested in industrial and economic growth of that particular country. Right? Whatever is the resources available, they are being shipped out from this country. So though there were, in, there were eminent scientific personalities, though there were research institutions, though there were a good number of schools and colleges and universities, right? nothing really helped in growth of industry in India, in the pre -independence. So I've just written three lines. Uh, so the second line is very important. The India gradually reduced to an agricultural colony of the British Raj. Okay. And if you remember, agriculture was really prospering in India. So what went wrong? In 1943, right? So there was this, uh, was it 43? Or was it a Right? So that, uh, there was absolutely no food in India, especially in the eastern part. Bengal famine. I think those who have gone through it in your history, history chapters, the Bengal famine, it killed around 4 million people in eastern part of India, roughly about 4 million. Okay. So that happened because all the resources, all the food, food crops, and etc., they were shipped out of India, right, to serve the uh, soldiers fighting in Second World War under the Axis power. So it shows that there was sufficient food, right? But that too is dropped off and taken out of this country. So whatever industrial growth were noticed were in the private sector and were mainly under European control. Now in this entire deliberation, I will try to avoid whatever happened in the private sector. I will try to focus on what happened in public sector, that is what our government did. Right? So I am not going to the political, political parties within the world, but what the Indian government did for all of us in this entire period of 75 years. So this is the crux of the bottom line. So thus the excellence in science and technology of the Indian masters in the pre independence era could not really support the growth of Indian industry, not even in the agricultural sector. Okay. But I have to mention one thing, that steel industry, right? So there was uh, an Indian pair, right? So there is Jamshit Tata, who started the Tata Steel, right? So it was set up in 1970. Uh, I should also mention the name of his son, uh, 
So they together, they started the Stata Iron and Steel Company and started in 97, started functioning of production in Peak Iron in 1911 and Steel Inworks in 1912. So that's a huge landmark in the private sector controlled by uh, India. So with that brief introduction, I switch to the post-independent states, right? So there are 75 years, right? So I will break it up into seven segments, each of 10 years. Once again, this approach is taken from uh, the government run NIC portal, okay? So I will break it into seven stages from 47 to 57, 57 to 67 and so on and so forth. And I will touch the landmarks, right? So whatever uh, thing happened in the development of technology in India. By the way, do you really understand what is meant by an advancing technology? Can you give an example? You are in class 9 and 10. So have you seen any advanced technology? Can you give an example? In real life? Phone. Huh? <coughs> Phone. Correct. Phone is what? So this wired phone is, right, it's not no longer you go, you go for a mobile phone. In mobile phone, you usually have to have a keypad, now we have a touchpad. We can uh, go through an entire cinema or a video <coughs> in the phone. Any other example? You use it almost every day, almost all of you. I see all my students doing it. Hmm? No. Uh, a daily, daily practice. Right, so, so say somebody goes to a, a small cafe, right? He buys a sandwich and bread huh? cut. Bread cut. Bread cut. What's the What now? Now is what you need. Online transaction. Right. You go for a phone pay. Right. So that's technology advancement. It's a very difficult process because you're allowing a third party right, to go to a bank, right, and make a financial transaction, right? And there are thousands of hackers lurking all over the world, globally, right? And if somebody gets hold of the data, right, so that the entire account is being emptied by him or her. So do you know what is really being done at the background? So there is a technology called encryption, right? So your data is garbled like anything, right? So you say your name is X and Y. So X will be changed to something else, Y will be changed to something else. And only at the two points, that means from where it transaction started and where it ended. So those two people will know how to, once again, de de encrypt the decrypt the thing and get the correct watch. Okay. So there's a very important technological advancement. Right? So I think all of you heard of the Carville law, the last war which which we uh, witness between India and Pakistan. So in Kargil war, what happened, what is important is in a, in a very rough terrain, right, the mobile phone does not work. Right? So people go for satellite phone. So whenever something is transferred up, it comes down. So even your enemy can pick up data from that. So what you are, you are seeing, that text message is being interpreted. So we saw under a few projects that very short time encryption mechanism. Whatever you say will be recorded, encrypted, then transmitted. And only the Indian army can decrypt that data and find out what is the actual order, what they have to do. Okay, so this is the advancing technology. And so, as Sarah has pointed out, there are once again plus points and minus points. So, America with its barrage of technology cannot get hold of Osama bin Laden. Because he used to send people with a chip, and on the chip he used to write what to do. Right? He picked the twin tower, he destroyed this, etc. On the chip. So he never used technology, so nobody could catch him. So here you see, I am not going to read everything because that will take a lot of time. So there is something highlighted in the red. Right? So that is very important. A country has to witness a planned growth in science and technology, right? So there must be a planning, it cannot be hands right? So the erudite people, they sat together, 
in something which is called the planning function, right? Uh, in geography, I think you will go through this chapter, no? Five year planning, first five year, Ponchu Varshi Ke Have you read about it? In geography. So there is a planning commission which will find out, which will generate a draft. That okay, in the first five years, these are the sectors where we have to develop. Right? So whether it's space research, or military research, or agriculture research, so on and so forth. Clear? So, from next slide onwards, we'll try to track what we really did achieve and what lies in the future. So the first period is from 1947 to 57. Right? So, in 1950, the planning commission of India was set up. And the first draft came out in June, I think in June 1951. I don't remember the date. Right? So the, if you look at the emphasis, the emphasis was correctly laid on setting up an enhancement of national level scientific research laboratories throughout the country. That means whatever is there, I will augment it, I will make it more modern, and I will once again identify where are the which are the areas where there has been no such level three and set up new level three for that. Okay. So what I have mentioned is a very important part of science and technology and development in this is basically setting up educational institutes. Because who will teach the people of this technology? Okay. So engineering colleges, medical colleges, etc. Et so so I have not touched that part because that basically makes it pretty big and uh, the umbrella becomes very large, very large. So I picked up three important laboratories, right? That came into eminence and they were given huge amount of fund. So that fundamental research in science can take this over there. So National Physical Laboratory is still now there, the National Chemical Laboratory and the Central Electrochemical Research Institute. Okay. Well, at that point of time, electrical, mechanical and chemical industries, they were the prime manufacturing industries. Okay. There are many other such industries, right? but I limited it to only three, three important ones. I switch to the next phase. The next phase is 57 to 67. Right? So here the main focus of the planning commission was on the agricultural sector, right? And you won't remember because at that point there was a toddler. Right? So it started from 67, 68 and it went up to 77, 78, something which is called the Green Revolution. Okay. So Green Revolution means given a piece of land, how can we increase the yield of the land? Right? So there are many things that came into picture. First is mechanized fur. Second is genetically modified seeds. Which are more resilient to environmental changes, so on and so forth. Third is use of pesticides and fertilizers. Right? Third is multiple crops. Right? Same piece of land. From this this time to that time, I'll go for rice and go for paddy. Then it goes for something else. Right? This practice was there. In, in Bengal, we used to say this among this lobby, so on and so forth. But this being, this a protocol is being drawn up, and accordingly, we used to change the agricultural pattern. Right? Now, this great revolution didn't start in India, it started somewhere else. But this experimentation was successful mainly in India and Mexico. So a handful of crops were selected, mainly the cereals, rice, wheat, maize, so and so forth. Okay. And it changed India's status from a food deficient country to one of the world's leading agricultural nations. Okay. So that is, once again as sir has pointed out, nothing comes free in nature. Okay. So nowadays, the entire scientific community, they are going against this type of agriculture. So they are saying go, go for organic foods, foods which are not grown with pesticides because they are health products, foods which are not genetically mutated because they are not easy to digest, 
right? And the second thing, or maybe the very important negative factor is the entire agricultural lands, they are getting devoid of all nutrients because you are plowing it three times, four times a year. Okay? And once again, if it does not work, you put more number of fertilizers, they are chemical components, so they will have influence. But this is something which changed the life of the rural people, especially in Punjab, Haryana, West UP and some places in South India. But fortunately, the eastern side countries like Bihar, Bengal, Assam, they are not really affected by the green pollution. They basically, they start to the old school of uh, growing crops and all those things. Right, so this particular institute I visited once in my life for some uh, electronic components which will help, a drone using which you can survey the agricultural field. So there is a very important institute, Indian Agricultural Institute, which was initially found, found, uh, founded in 1905 in Pusan, Bihar. Right, so just before this presentation part, I was going through the history. Right. So it was started by an American philanthropist who donated at that point of time, 1905, 30,000 US pounds, US dollars, okay, to initiate this. Later on, it became a secular uh, institute, and now it's in, in, uh, in Delhi. It's shifted in 1936 in Delhi because the entire old institute it got dilapidated after an earthquake in Pusan. So it's launched by a Soviet Union space center. Okay, 
So there was an agreement between the Soviet Union and many friendly nations that whenever once a satellite is being put into the orbit, it will launch from Soviet Union or US. So it conducted experiments on astronomy, study of upper atmosphere and solar physics for years. Right? But later on, uh, there was some power failure and uh, default. And once again, a question to you. Do you remember who was Ar Aryabhatta or Arjabhatta? So please, huh? Zero. Aryabhatta? Only fifth century like a mathematician, she like an astronomer. Take it. When I show fifth century, I was the show. She showed me to astrophysics here. Tade was to produce a thing, right? Right? How the celestial bodies are going to So it was named Ariabhatta just to honor him. Right? So anybody uh, interested in philately? So I mean, stamp collection, is it a hobby of anyone in the audience? No, because everybody is interested in watching the mobile, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are interested in Philately, you search the net, you will find there is a stamp, Are you able stamp. I have it because during my, my days when I was a student, right, I was very fond of buying the first account. First thing about is when the stamp is launched, then from post office you can buy an envelope on which the stamp is being posted. Okay. Now once again, uh, I will do huge amount of injustice if I don't mention the name of Dr. Vikram Sarabhi. Right? So here, he lived only for 50, 50 or 52 years, but he was born the space, the father of space research in India. Right? So initially, before ISRO was being founded, in 1962, the government of India established the National Committee for Space Research and under the August leadership of Dr. Sarabha. Right? But that in 1969 was superseded by ISRO. Right? And there was another department, it's called DOS, DOS, Department of Space under the government of India. So TOS and ISRO, right, they work in conjunction to carry out the space in India. Now, ISRO is having its headquarters in Bengaluru, right, but there are other activities, there are other system concerns. I have named a few. The first one is very important is the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, right. So it's in Tiruvathapuram. It builds the launch vehicle. So what is the launch vehicle? When you have a satellite, the satellite cannot move on its own to space. Right? There must be a launch vehicle which is carry it to space. Right? And there is your Rao Satellite Center in Bengaluru, right? which designs and develops which designs and develops the satellite. And there's another very eminent scientist, Shatish Dhawan Space Center. Shatish Dhawan was uh, leading uh, he was called the rocket plan of this one. It's in Sri Harikota, Sri Harikota is in Andhra Pradesh. Right? So that's an integration center. What is an integration center? So somebody prepares the satellite, somebody prepares the, the launching system. The launch so those two are being here. integrated, tested, and then finalized. So then this entire integrated system will work. The satellite will be put in the orbit, and the launcher will burn out and fall. Sure. There are two, two more centers. One, the first center is, so whenever a satellite goes up, what it does, it makes experiments, right? It will collect data and send back the data. Now, how do you collect data? I need sensors, right? So, what is a very simple sensor? So, when you fall in, when you run, when you run in temperature, you put a thermometer. So, thermometer is basically a sensor, right? It senses your body temperature. And the doctor can see that, okay, you are running temperature, so you need some medication. Okay. So sensors are something like that. Now, development of sensor in space, right, at that sub-zero temperature level is a difficult proposition. So sensors, building of sensors and basically putting them in proper encapsulation, that's been done in another one. Right? 
And there are few remote sensing centers, uh, sensors, that's in Hyderabad. So remote sensing of satellite data. And Ahmedabad, once again, being an engineer, once again, associated with such projects. So we had projects from Ahmedabad, where they have sensors from which data are being collected to uh, design or then to model, find out a mathematical model of the standard Indian atmosphere. Okay. So all those sensors, they come from Israel. What we do? We put up the sensor at different places, we collect the data, and then from the data, we propose what is going to be the mathematical model. Okay. So any idea what is the mathematical model? I am using this technical jargon, so, so those jargons may be Greek to you. So mathematical model means, they suppose, so have you started reading electricity? In physics? What is your electricity? Currently, it's really possible. So think of a very simple system, say a ball is being dropped from a height, right? So when you drop a ball, it gains velocity, it strikes the ground, bounces back. Okay. So from Newton's law of motion, you can write an equation for that. Okay. So this is a physical event which can be described with a mathematical equation. Okay. So that's what is called building up a mathematical model. So once again, an environment is there, there is change in the refractive index, composition, so on and so forth. Whether from available data, read from the sensor, you can find the mathematical model of the atmosphere. So those works, they are also done by Israel. Now this is once again a very interesting area and our team in Jalapur University has worked with this group right, over the year 20 years and that is the, the Integrated Guided Design Development Program. So it was the brainchild of Dr. Kalam. So what, so what he did is, he thought that we need to attain self-sufficiency in the field of missile technology. Okay. So, he actually sponsored students, postgraduate students in different engineering colleges, right? So that's called this IGM DP scholarship. So those students, they will be sponsored and the entire money required for the study will be given by DRDL. But after passing out, they have to join DRDL and serve them. Okay. So I'll just quickly go through the high uh, important issues. This Agni missile, this is a, it's called a strategic ballistic missile. Missiles are of two types. One is strategic, that is which can take up huge payload that will generate a big blast and your enemy will be frightened. The second one which is more difficult to design, a tactical one. So say uh, uh, 300 meters, uh, meters apart there is there's a small window, you go and hit the window. Or put the missile through the window. So that's called a tactical missile. The first, this type of missile is named Agni, and now we have Agni 5, which is true intercontinental ballistic, ballistic missile. So, if you look at the range, it's around 8,000 kilometers. So, both China and Pakistan, they are afraid of India because this particular missile, it can carry nuclear air. So, there are also many such missiles, out of which this NAR missile is a very uh, sophisticated missile, it's an anti tank missile. In 87-97, I'll put you through it, it's called DNA fingerprinting. Okay, so if you find out some cellular material from, from a spot, right, so from DNA fingerprinting and find out how this person has been to some other person. Okay, so, so it's being used in criminal investigation, other forensic purposes, and pattern distance, very important. Whether somebody is the I am his son, I am his daughter, so that can be checked by DNA. So I've given you the name of the research centers where this group is being pioneered. 90, 97 to 2000, right? So once again, as Sir has pointed out, so this nuclear test, bomb test, okay, it has been carried out in Boca and is declared as National Technology Day by then Prime Minister Leto Kubiari Vajpayee.
and once again this in this year do proper test mein national uh, technology thing right i right? should know something about the background he is once again a special person in indian nuclear science field come ja rahe the ba he once again uh, lived a very short life right so the next the next thing which got in his life so he established this tifr then the atomic energy service from the this was later taken up by government of india and that becomes the gold bar the bhava atomic society so it is having large number of sister organizations indira gandhi center for atomic research the raja ramana center for advanced technology and the variable energy sector one center right so this center is there in kolkata okay so it possibly can make a visitor of there they allow visitors from schools and colleges Okay. Now this is the last one, right? But it's very important one. It's the Chandra and the others. Okay. So now he soon started building up lunar vehicles, which will send a satellite to Chandra, land it on on lunar surface, and make experiments. Okay. So Chandra and and Mars were quite the mission. This is called Mongolia. So these two projects were taken up in this period of time. the chandra one and chandra two especially chandra two which attempted the landing on the moon right it failed right but immediately chandra three has started because they have detected there is a software glitch which actually uh, caused this failure okay so they have already started chandra three and once again we are fortunate that jalapur university a very small project is given right where the software simulation of the landing process is tried out And finally, this uh, their dream project is called the Galileo project. Right? So the the geostationary satellites. Right? So how can we put up such satellites in orbit? What could not be already uh, addressed? There are many such areas where technology uh, development has taken place. I'll mention a very few power generation because without power, nothing can happen in a mechanized system. Manufacturing industries. Right? So you know there are many such manufacturing industries which have excelled in India. Then research and development in electrical, electronics, and communication. Communication is basically something which you feel every day. Then the advancement of mobile phone. Right? The camera is the big one. Mobile phone. So that's a big topic in computer science. Image processing. How you grab an image and then you fill up the data, right? By taking information from here and there. So a good picture is being taken. So you have seen those field cameras, huge lens, all these things. Now this mobile phone can take picture of that same thing. This is done by software. There is no optical information. Obviously, it was a very important step to design some information technology. I gave you an example: a credit card, payment banking, phone banking, etc. And once again, you see it every day in the automobile industry, right? So there is a GPS system. They can track where you're going, and so on, so forth. And the sixth one, which is also very important, can take hours to explain. The application of engineering technologies in medical science. Right? Think of the phaco surgery. Somebody will replace your lens in six to seven minutes. Very well slick. The biological lens, which is a little opaque, is taken out. A small collapsible lens is inserted. Right? After insertion. It expands and becomes a functioning lens of the eye. The microsurgery. Previously, you cut open the entire tummy and then take out the disease portion. Now, there's only three wires going: a light source, a cutter, and some. That's it. So, once again, it's engineering technology. Right? So, I think we should conclude. Otherwise, we can be talking for all of you. So, once again. Uh, big thank you for for, for my part for patient uh, listening on this. Thing. So your queries you can quickly short them. No query. That's good. So let's end this session with this. Uh, thank you.
So, on behalf of the museum, we would like to thank you, uh, Sir Madhya <coughs> Banerjee, Professor Madhya Banerjee, and thank you all the students who are present. They are really uh, showing us really good lessons because I think that uh, we are already hungry and we are waiting for other shows and other programs. Thank you so very much, and obviously, thank you so uh, very much to your teachers and of course, who have brought you here. Thank you, thank you so much. And also, those who are online, those who have been watching our program, thank you so very much for being with us. Thank you.